um, we are here for one of our live art demos online. So for those that don't know, we are part of Artbeat Studio, which is a nonprofit that believes in the healing power of art. We offer six month residency to artists living with mental health challenges. And then afterwards, they're free to sell their art in the gallery we have here that we are in right now. I'm not gonna show the office. Um, so since we're graced with the opportunity to be in the gallery, we're gonna show off um, one of our artists and read their bio and show off some of their work. Um, if you don't know, you can come in person across the hall from here in Portage Place to make art in person. But for anyone that can't make it or just wants to do art while, while they can't be in, we have this live for you. So I will turn around the camera and we will switch and then we'll read the bio. So today we are showcasing Ember Boulay. Ember, born in Winnipeg in 1981, has a deep passion for hands-on creativity. This passion initially led them to explore crochet, scrapbooking, and woodworking during junior high eventually focusing on the latter at RRCC. Recently, Ember has developed a keen interest in weaving, uh, weaving ribbons to craft vibrant checkered patterns. Stretch canvases serve as the foundation for Ember's artistic process, as he intricately weaves the ribbons onto the canvas, resulting in unique pieces of art. In a different approach, Ember opts to affix ribbons to cardstock. This creative method results in beautifully adorned covers for journals and notebooks showcasing versatility in their artistic expressions beyond traditional wall hangings. Ember states that, I am fascinated with geometric design. Even my drawings are largely geometric. I enjoy knitting and ribbon weaving because the patterns are neat, tidy, clear, and reassuring. I've never enjoyed coloring outside the lines. Perhaps as I develop, and with the ability to lean on and learn from others that Artbeat has provided, I may gradually decide to work outside the lines in the future. Beyond weaving, they also specialize in knitting mittens, showcasing a preference for the 2S LGBTQIA plus rainbow colors and the trans white, pink, and blue. Um, on navigating challenges, Ember emphasizes a well-organized approach and a reliance on humor. Their resilience, insightfulness, and meticulous perfectionism shine through in their artistic endeavors, reflecting a deliberate and careful creative process. So, see some of their beautiful work here it's i can assure you it's even nicer in person although we do have print versions which do actually a pretty good job at capturing the the beauty of they of course don't have the same shine that the ribbons have but they are very beautiful i think yeah and for the journal covers i would mention ember actually binds the journals as well um, we don't have them in the store right now, but they are very, very beautiful. So this is Ember's bio, and for those that were here last week, here's Tiffany's. We didn't have the bio last week, but we read it in terms of their art, so we want to show off a couple of Tiffany's pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ones we have on the wall over here. that we showed last week. So, oh yeah, we have more little prints by Ember. So we're just waiting on Marissa so we can, before we start the art, because um, we are doing needle felting this week, but we only have one, and this is our setup. I am going to disappear once Marissa gets here, but for now, I'll just look around the gallery, I guess. Like, sneak peek at the, at the example. This is my aunt's, uh art piece and it was sent to Canada it was not made in Canada and she did such a great job with whiskers you can see the whiskers are right yeah. 
And if you look closely, you can see all the details of the <laughs> of the cat. And here's oh, Marissa. Hi, Marissa. <gasps> hi everyone. Welcome. What did I miss? <laughs> okay, don't leave the Nothing needle. Nothing you don't know about. Okay, great. <laughs> Don't lose the needle I just gave you. Um, so I do have more colors that I brought. That's all. Um, so typically, um, the tools. Okay. Oh yeah, good. <laughs> are you are you going to across? Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant good for. Oh. <laughs> Great. We have everything here. Perfect. You can see. I love it. Lovely. Lovely. So typically. With needle felting, what you do is you have these little needles that are L-shaped and if you can see at the very bottom, there's barbs on these. Good old barb. It's really tricky to see. But these needles are what makes needle felting the art form that it is. The one issue, very frequently, is that these needles sometimes will snap on you. The smaller they are, the more they snap. But that is a known, and um, they sell them quite frequently. I, I've even seen these at Umomo, that Japanese dollar store. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've seen them have noodles there. This is so, so cool. Oop. But did I pick up any needles before this workshop? No. <laughs> did I think I had enough needles when I checked this morning? Are they actually yep. the same kind? No. So no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experiment and see. But I'm going to show you folks here a little demo first while Kate's figuring out what she wants to make. And then I'm gonna see, you know, if you wanna practice this needle felting, but you don't have one of these fancy needles or you have a bunch and you can't find them or they've broken, in my case here, we're gonna try different things. See what we can do and try and see if we can <laughs> try out needle felting using a standard needle and a broken needle and then a regular needle and we'll see how it turns out. I'm up for the adventure. But first I will show you folks how to properly do it and I'll show Kate again how to properly do it as well. And then we'll get Kate set up on the project that they'll be doing. So you, you keep looking. I just really want to try the flat one, but not the butterfly. Oh. Maybe I'll go with a small abstract. I cool. have never done anything mm -hmm. like that before. Felt is not something I ever tried. I was really excited about that project. Yeah. Even though it's something super simple and yeah. it does not, might not look like a huge accomplishment, but for me, it would be. It, it is even so. So we all saw those beautiful <laughs> little cats that Kate has brought, which is so sweet. And who made this? Uh, my aunt. Oh and my gosh. My aunt lives in Russia. Oh, so not only is it a sweet little kitten, it's a little Russian kitten. <laughs> oh, look how sweet. I wonder what language, what words it knows. I wonder what its favorite snacks are. The whiskers. Are. The whiskers everything. are very cute. So that is something that you are able to do with this art form. See, you're starting off with felt. So this is the type of felt it is. If you get felt at the super or superstore, <laughs> dollar store, wherever you do go, um, it comes in flat sheets, and that's like a boiled wool or a boiled felt, or just as that way. Um, these ones are not put into those sheets yet. This is just still spun wool. Um, so if you, you know, know someone who has a lot of sheep, or know someone who has like wool, or they they work with it, they'll like spin their own. Um, materials. So they'll spray in their own string, their own um, fabric, they'll make their wool. How they do that, they have one of those really cool, almost looks like a very intricate wooden spinning top, but it has a hook. And from there, you'll have a little bit of a hook and you'll just twist it. And then over time, you're going to just be twisting and having it pull and all the fibers, I'm pulling this here, but the fibers would stay connected and you keep pulling. And that's how you make string out of this type of material. But how you can make these sweet little critters, animals. Um, I'm just gonna snag this book from really quickly here. I thought that was a, a brush. I'm like, oh, Neil, get that one off. Um, I have this beautiful book, which I love learning from books because you can bring it with you. You can flip back to it anytime. You can keep a page open with it. A lot of times I do my artwork and I have the book open underneath. So maybe I'll have like paint or something on it. But it has a bunch of different examples and I've actually done this teddy bear here 
it took me about three weeks or so. So you can see all the steps of how it is to make. You have a little ball first. A cool technique, and I think we'll have to look in the back around um, by the, uh, the desk back there. I'm gonna see if I can show you folks this, but this is how you would make a curve or a dent, a little disc out of um, the needle felting. And that's something that I can show very quickly to show how I would make it that way. Um, and it gives you a great example of how needle felting is done. But then if you're wanting to make attachments to it and have the animal move, so say our cute little kitty here doesn't um, have like uh, the ability to like move its legs or anything like that, it kind of bends a little bit, but doesn't have the ability to. If you wanted say to have um, an animal that you can manipulate and turn the head or move the arms, you can use dental floss. That works very, very well. Just as you would do here, you can stitch it in the bottom and then loop it through in the top, um, even to attach eyes that way too. This one has the very, very sweet uh, glass or plastic eyes that are looped in the back and they're actually just pierced all the way through because once you have this, it's just a bunch of this fabric knotted together in a way. Um, so pretty, pretty cool. So I'm gonna open you back up to that page there, Kate, so you can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm trying, uh, I'm trying not to think about what I want to make because mm -hmm. I want to try how it works. Sure, yeah. Well, I'm going to also put these colors in front of us because I find these pinks. I got a bunch of these small, small kits. And the thing is, too, if you are wanting to make, um, say you want to make a pink cat, you're going to need so much of this material. You're going to need a lot of felt. So say if you have this here, because over time, you know, you're compacting it and you're squishing it. So if you really see and you squish down as much as you can, the most we would get from this little pink is kind of this ball here. If I was making it 3D, if I was making it um, 2D and a big picture, kind of like how Kate's going to work on today, um, it would spread a lot more. But something you could always do is you could have your piece. I'm going to show and demonstrate how to work with the material with this pink because I find it so pretty. You take your piece and you'll pull the thread around so you can see it's like rolled up here. Do a nice pull and the fiber is just, it's so satisfying how it comes apart that way. Um, and you can pull again, have it start of that way. When we are going to mix the two pieces together, um, you kind of want to work with your, your fabric maybe, or your, your bits of uh, strands here, maybe I would say like two two inches, especially if you wanted to work flat. You don't need it too, too long, even mixing colors too. Another really cool thing you can do with this is you can mix the colors. So just to show, taking a little bit of this rich, rich purple, take some of that out. If we wanted to mix a color, so I'm basically, Kate, what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna show a couple very basic steps of what you can do, and then we're gonna make things. We're gonna go into making making that beautiful <laughs> um, abstracted piece that you're working on. So I have this really like fanned out and stretched, stretched out there. I also love the foam because you can like put it on there and it stays for you. So mixing colors, I'm gonna take some of this purple, and then from there, just really also spread it out. And when you are wanting to use your needle for needle felting, because it has all those barbs in it, it's just gonna be repeatedly poking down into the foam to make and mix your colors or to make it um, hardened as a piece. The best way to do that though, is have your fibers sort of crisscross. So say we have the pieces here, to mix them, I can take this lighter material and the darker, and just as I was doing before, just start stranding them together and a bunch then go back to the pink and add a bit so it's just really blending in these pieces but as we sort of poke it down and stab it it's going to create um, a nice blend of colors so now that I have most of my pieces and most of my strands all going one way I'm just going to take this hand and cross it like there and then you can already see it's stuck there so if I wanted to do it speedy I could condense it and roll it but I always really like to just start off by um, compacting it a bit. So I'll take this and what I like to do is I like to hold it on the thicker part right up there. And then I'll take my other finger and just put it on the top little L shape. And always try when you are piercing it to go up and down like that. As you can do it this way too, but as soon as you start doing it at an angle, if you push any little bit over, that's when you get a little bit of um, breakage happening. 
But as you see, it happens to everybody. So if it happens today, we just cut our workshop short. So it's fine, no worries. So now that I have that piece there, I'll take this and I'll watch my fingers because this is very sharp and these are very precious. I'm gonna just stab and you can hear the nice sound. If you do this in a quiet room, oh, it's good. <laughs> Now my foam brick is a lot thinner than Kate's foam brick, so I have to watch when I'm stabbing so I don't stab all the way through. But this was the foam that I got in the set that I had, and I've had this kit for a bit of time, um, but that this is really good for it. And then Kate is separating with this, but this is um, stabilizer. So the really cool thing about this is um, we, we'll get some scissors and we'll cut out the shape, and then you will then put your shape wherever it's going to be so say it's going to be here and i want to draw like a little abstract pond shape i'll sort of block that out and then i will take pins and i'll just poke it in so i hold that in there as i'm working with it then the best part is because if you're wanting to make something flat you can't leave it on your phone the whole time like once you're done with it you don't want to frame it you may want to add it as a patch to clothing or you could add it to a bag or even add it to a little easel and hang it up somewhere so after you've done a little bit of um, material on there, you want to stiffen it up, you can always have another layer added to this. And I'm just folding it because I don't have a scissor right now with me, but it would be the same. So you can add a little bit of stiffener, keep working on it, add your color, make it really big. And then after you're done, if you see a little bit of a stiffener showing, you can actually wet a paintbrush with warm water and you can almost paint it away and it dissolves. Oh. It's really cool. It's not just mesh. Oops, it was stuck. Okay. Yeah, so this is, so if you have a little bit showing off from the side, don't worry about it. No issues there. But, um, so showing off all those materials, the last thing here, I'm just gonna poke, do some poking, do some, some so stabbing. You draw yeah, you can draw something you'd like to do. You can even draw it on there if you want to, that way we can yeah. see what you do. So Kate's working on her design. I'm gonna show you here. Then I'm just poking and poking. And then after I get a good bit around, just stabbing it all. I'm not working on a flat piece. If you are working on this and you're wanting to sort of keep this shape, like if I were to make this into a heart, which I definitely can, um, I would just fold some pieces over to kind of make that heart shape. And then fold over there too. So what you can do, two methods to make an edge. Some folks will use their fingernails, but if they feel like it's too close to them and they don't want to like hurt themselves, <laughs> they can just, as I'm doing, um, kind of gently push it over and then spread it. Uh, other things you can do too. I don't have a spoon or a ruler with me, but I have a pack of needles here. I can actually use this and push down. So see, we have that line on that side. Let's do it over here. Do that and we'll actually push and use this to hold it down. And then we'll almost be making an edge with it this way. So some people use their fingernails. This is too close for comfort for me. Um, especially if you know you're doing this and listening to music or so. Leave this is too ambitious, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not at all. I no. think that's great. Yeah. So you can see here that I have that clean line. And then we're gonna pull it in a little bit. I'm making a heart to oh, show okay. off the example of okay. the blended color. Yeah. And then I'm gonna swap it to you and get you set awesome. up. Get a scissor if you have. And then I would recommend cutting it out still so you can put pins around it. So give it a bit of a circle. I think that's a perfect size cake. It may be a little tricky working with um, like around certain spots of it, but hey, if you need to make it a little bit bigger after, you can do that. And it's a great starting project. Um, so I'm still pulling in where I was working. And now, because I'm making this into a 3D object, um, I can pull it up off of my foam there. And you can see, you can probably see through it, but it is triangular <laughs> in form. So from here, I'm gonna probably just make it into a smaller heart. It's clearly lunch break in the hallway, <laughs> as you can hear outside. And then I'm gonna roll in this side and down. Oop, if you saw that, I just poked myself.
So now that I have it as I'm building it up, it's still getting kind of wedge shape. Another tip you can do, but again, always be careful with needle felting, is you can stab it in between here. This is one of the moves though that I feel like it's too close for comfort again. I'm just gonna keep folding it to a really, really small part. So this is almost like Valentine's Day just passed. <laughs> and I'm making my Is this thing. okay if I keep it like this and don't don't cut this pieces? Yeah, I'm I'm sure. And then you can put your little pin in the corners. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Thanks. Yeah, so you can pin that to your um sponge. And I'm gonna keep working on this little heart here to show a very quick color blending and also how to work with the materials and then I'm going to be starting to experiment how to do some um, needle felting and mixing that up and Kate's going to work on her own first piece. It's going to be very exciting. Um, so typically when you are working with needle felting and you um, find it a little bit hard to start uh, poking it through after a while, the needles do come in different thicknesses and sizes. I do have smaller ones. Um, but those ones are the ones that always break very easily on, yeah, so you gotta be safe with those. Mm -hmm. That's great. You can also just poke them off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then what colors do you think you'll start off with? Uh, you had yellow that you were working on? Are you going to keep I going with yellow? yellow for the center. Yeah. So I'm thinking if I can actually use this for the center. Mm, okay. Yeah, so you would pull it apart like mm -hmm. on its strands and then yeah, crisscross it. And then and just and then here. you can put it there and then use this and start stacking I'm gonna try I'm gonna try using a regular needle and see what happens. It's using a regular needle is gonna take a lot longer. Um I'm actually gonna use one of these because then it looks like I'm using it. Oh, it's not even stabbing here. Regular needle is going to take a lot longer because it doesn't have those barbs to grip. Um, but hey, it's loosening it up a bit. How's it working for you, Kate? There. Uh, I'm trying. You're doing it. That's all that matters. <laughs> so that's what they start with. That's what I have right now. Perfect. So. Um, Kate has this beautiful little flower and what I'd say Kate is you can even now like wrap that around your fingers a bit and, uh -huh. and keep poking it. Okay. Keep poking it. Really you poke it a lot more than you think you need to. Over time it's just it keeps it keeps adding to it. But it's so cool what little things you can make. I was making this little egg thing earlier. <laughs> now I can actually I don't know what it was. It's like a flowery thing. It's also tricky because you want to make sure that folks can see what you're doing. But you also got to hold it. Yeah, you just did a little <laughs> sound. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good. It doesn't disturb me. No, I like the sound a lot. It's actually quite peaceful. Mm -hmm. So I'm using just a normal needle and it's not really building anything, but it actually is softening it up a lot. I find that with my felting, especially this is one that I've made, it gets very hard quickly, but then after a while, it's just so matted and compacted. Um, so maybe a regular needle isn't always the best to use because it's not gonna grab those pieces and push them down like the barbs do, but it does nicely soften things and loosen them. So I'm gonna do it to this piece now. Yeah, my little cute little. I normally like having a few pieces at once to work on too, and I've seen some artists, um, like the animals are very typical of fiber arts, like I, and the, um, the needle felting, I feel like the cute little furry guys like that, everyone's always making them, they're so sweet. Um, I've made two bears, nothing else really. A friend of mine, I wanted to bring it, a friend of mine made me a little hot dog. <laughs> And um, they made our other friend a little cowboy bee. It's a bee with a cowboy hat on. It's very sweet. I like that a lot. So it's, it's a fun thing. You can make like these little gifts for your friends or just have something that you can, I like those crafts that you can just kind of like sit 
and poke something. So I want to add the real time in there, right? Yeah. So this and now. That's finished. perfect, yeah. 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 Okay. It's looking really great too. I like what you have on there so far. <laughs> so um, also, because you have this book open here, I'm gonna show this really cool, just show over some of the tools here. So as we were showing and talking about, the felting needle has the little L shape, the little shaft or the stick part, and then the blade. And that blade is where you have all those barbs. So when you take um, any bit of felt and it pushes down, it's gonna snag up pieces and push it in there. So really the work that this needle is gonna do is probably about five or six times faster using one of those guys. But both are still able to use it. The needle punches as well, those are pretty cool. These things will hold about five or six needles in it at once, so it really makes the work go faster than the single needle. This is like the slowest way to, to get your felting done, um, but it is also the cheapest way to do it. So I personally, that's the only method I do. I like this picture of her getting her shoulder cut. <laughs> this is the fuzz if you find that you you have like too much fuzz and you want to clean it up also yeah. this little cat has now been hanging around our um yarn and balls so he's been uh getting a little bit of colored fuzz on him we can clean him up later oh i hope this little heart turns out then i can make it for the cat <gasps> perfect right now he has his little egg <laughs> But yeah, there's some really talented people online that do needle felting. Um, there's one artist I saw who makes these really, really big ones and like has crazy like eyeballs that they make and they make them like 3D, but it's almost like a flat piece too. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, it's definitely one of those things though that you just, you work and you poke something for so long mm -hmm. And then you take a step back and look at it, and it's just, did I do anything? <laughs> so just poking for so long. How's it going? It's looking nice. Yeah. though. Yeah. So the thing is with that too, like it's going to be very, um, it may be very uh, thin still. Uh -huh. So you may, like they said at the, in the book, um, yeah. if you're using the plat, stabilizer and you're making something that you want to be able to remove or have it as like a little disc mm -hmm. maybe you put another layer of the stabilizer on and you can do another layer over top but we can always see too how it's going i think it's looking good so far it's really nice though you got a really nice coverage on there yeah okay. yeah i like it okay uh i'll go with uh, around yeah what color are you gonna put around Bird. I don't really care. I just want to try. Yeah, uh, let's <laughs> Whatever say. You well, you have a middle that's yellow. I think the purple is really nice. The red here is fun. Yeah. This pink. Light yeah, let's go pink. with the pink. Like this dark pink? Yeah. Or this one? This one's good. This one? I don't really, it doesn't matter right at the moment. <laughs> she just wants to do it. <laughs> wants to get it done. I mean, that's fair. I like working on it too. It's cool though, huh? I like the art that you do like a quick, it's like one or two quick steps and then you kind of, it's just up to customization. What colors you're going to use, what thing you're going to make. You're working on quite a small piece, so I think not too, too much. Yeah, I love, I love the sound. Mm -hmm. Oop, the cat just jumped out. realized I'm singing. What? I was just singing Loosen It Up to the proof. So this oh. is the other thing. Um, I started making a heart, but as I'm working on it, especially with 3D, now it's kind of looking like a little like weird bird thing. Um, so I think it's just gonna be a toy for the cat. Oh, okay. I'm making your cat a little toy. 
Well, it had a big day. It went out and was on the live stream. Deserves something nice. <laughs> Have you named this cat Ace? Um, no. Oh, there's only one Ace. There's one Ace. <laughs> yeah. These cat Aces stay on the two days or two days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it got there, but it gets everywhere. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, that does it. Ace is like this, I am the cat. You brought a cat in that looks like me? Yeah, you're gonna have it look like me. Well, like, was there before Ace, maybe? Oh, maybe was not? it? I'm not sure. Maybe Ace is finally, Ace, as you all know, is Kate's cat. <laughs> that looks pretty spot on to this one. Does Ace have like more yellowy eyes than green? Like yellow green, yeah. Slip out of my fingers a little bit so I pat it on the head. <laughs> it won't be sad. <laughs> I almost dropped it. I wonder if I can put like a little tiny beak on this. Like add a little, and oh, sometimes it's like a little bird. A little bird friend. Just showing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's give the. Does it make sense? I think so. <laughs> Look at that! It is coming together! Oh, it's great! You did such a good job with that circle there, too. Yeah, it's going great. I think what I would maybe do is maybe work on one petal at a time. Mm -hmm. So then just like fold that pink back uh -huh. into the spot and work on it. Okay. If you wanted, you can keep, and then that way you'll see like a nice clear definition maybe between the petals if you just kind of have them out as bumps versus like all the way across. Yeah, I think foil it up and then stab it down again. Mm -hmm. Um, or other options you could do is you could always do like a different shade of pink in, in between. But I like that. It's going to it's coming come together. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it looks really great. I like the uh, technique. But yeah, out of uh, it's a cool it's a cool exercise for sure. Watching it in real time speed. Don't know how cool it is. <laughs> I think anytime I watch a felting video online, it's always like the hand is moving a million times a minute. And I'm like, oh, they definitely just like sped it up. <laughs> but sometimes I can get at a good rhythm. Like right now, I think I'm carving out a wing. I do like it too, because it kind of is like carving as well. Yeah, I'm making a purple duck. Purple duck. It's okay. turning into a purple duck, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it can ride the cat's back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it actually is a good fit. I'm going to make it to, to ride the cat after. <laughs> that is the benefit of it too. You can customize your projects. So I'm very disappointed I didn't bring it. I'll, I'll, um, we'll post a picture of them today. Like the ones I have at home, I'll take pictures of them and we'll post them. We'll add them to the post. Just to show what it is is like, I think I picked up this hobby during COVID. Like it was one of my hobbies that I was just working on at home forever. Um, and I made the bear that was in this book. And then I made him a vest that you can take on. And oh. Oh. <laughs> and then I made a panda bear. And the panda bear put some pink on the cheeks and it looks like they're just nice and rosy. So it's cool that like after the fact of you making something, like, maybe you could make a hat for this cat and something that you could just interchange and like wow <laughs> it's not quite a hat it looks like a piece of bread but look at the little kitty oh ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh that one's very avant-garde kitty if you will wow beautiful so yeah it makes total sense because there is a definition between the <laughs> It's a uh, blue avocado. Mm, yeah, my blue avocado head. Yeah, you can totally see the definition there. Kate was just saying as she was stabbing it in. There's no other way to say it, stabbing it in. <laughs> um, yeah, you can clearly see that line. Yeah, amazing. Great work. So you, again, either working on it continually with the same color, um, how we added two colors into this purple duck that I'm working on. That wasn't a duck before, now it is. I do think I need a little bit... Maybe. Does yellow we... for the beak? Oh, I will need yellow for the beak. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make a little yellow beak. Um, another cool thing I will show you folks here on
So that tip I was showing people with the plastic, also you can do it with a coin. And these are the best because they don't crack. So what, this actually may even be something you may wanna, I, I feel like you're doing pretty well though without having any finger stabs going on. Yeah. But you can use the coin if you want to say like make this rounded, but hold things down to be a rounded edge. Uh -huh. um, you'll brush it around and then use the coin almost as like a uh, like a, a template and you'll pierce around the coin and then you can make it as your circle. This is also probably why I've broken some of my nails. But <laughs> this is a... How does it actually like... I mean, so we're, just... we're just following along with the... Um, where the coin is. I'm just going yeah. back and forth and back and forth there. So that repeated pattern of me pushing down is slowly adding a curve mm -hmm. to there versus like me having to use my fingernail and hold it there. Mm -hmm. That's another tech little trick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my little bird head. It's, it's coming together still. It's too far down. Nice. Great work. <laughs> yeah, that's totally, you can really, really see it coming together. There. Yeah, so that area there, after if you, once you're done with it, yeah. you can always add some warm water and then paint it away, it'll dissolve. Oh. It's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> Kate may be hooked. <laughs> Kate may be hooked. That's not a cat that's awesome. Great work. It's really fast too. See, that's that's the other thing. Depends on the person. If you get into it and you just like really enjoy needle felting, you'll get faster at it. It's like kumihimo. The more you do it, the faster you get at it. It takes me so long to work on those. I can see myself actually slowing down for a little bit. Oh, know, yeah. Just because of detail. Yeah. Because this is as hard as it can get when you want to get the line. I think so, yeah. So that that is the other thing. You're like doing either. This is why I, I, I do 3D ones to start off myself a lot of times. Like, I really, I haven't done a 2D image. I really want to. Seeing how you're doing it, I feel confident that, like, it actually looks not too bad. Like it looks pretty nice. You get immediate results versus something you're having to actively sculpt at the same time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, I like that technique. There's a cool fish picture in <laughs> this book I'd like to work on. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did not really like it, but maybe it's just the image. The fish? Yeah. Oh. What do you have against fish? Okay. I don't know. Hmm. It just doesn't look like something that's going to be. Kate thinks fish are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know this is. <laughs> <laughs> look at me! <laughs> is. Ooh, oh, that's so cool. I have to see it. Every time I'm looking it up, I'm like, is it fog? Is it out of frame? I cannot, I cannot tell. That is lovely. Yeah, so she's just taking her needle and creating that piece. And me, where is it? I'm making something. Is it a heart? Is it a bird? It's gonna be a duck, I think. <laughs> but we'll keep working on it. There you go, thanks. <laughs> I'm very impressed though, because I'm doing the poor man's version with a sewing needle. And it's working. It's working? Oh yeah, it just takes forever. Okay. <laughs> so again, if folks are at home and they're like, I would really want to try it, but I can't buy those needles anywhere, you can use a sewing needle. Just make sure it's a big one. And it takes a long time. Um, but I have seen these at Umomo. So good place to go. go. Umomo is so good. And this also, I feel like, has. No, it doesn't. I thought this had like a little bit of a, a bit on it. Um, I think Umomo also carries like the little glass eyes. Oh, do they? Yeah, oh. I know. They have such a good crafting set. Like a good selection there. Nice origami paper too, of course. I never checked on that because the only reason I could come there 
to look for something for the kids. Mm -hmm, yeah. And what they were looking for, it was not that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like they definitely like, because there's like cute stuff there. There's like Asian and um, Japanese treats and like candies and food. We've gotten like a Japanese curry there before, which is really good. Just add it to, you had like your protein to it and then rice. It's delicious. Yeah, I don't even know exactly what it's called. I think it's Japanese curry. Oh. Or Japanese or Korean curry. It's probably Japanese. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's delicious. Yeah, they have really good snacks there and fun uh, things. And everything is like three fifty. Most of the things. There's some things that are more expensive, but that's normally like the cheapest general pricing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like it. And there's good organization stuff. I'm, I'm talking it up so much, maybe I'll go after work. <laughs> <laughs> Just pop in <laughs> before before the weekend. See if there's any little so the needles there are how old? Where do you find them? And the, um, yeah, I would say the, uh, there's like a section that has like knitting stuff. It's all, there's all the, our, the crafting section is kind of like in a few aisles. Uh -huh. It's kind of more in the middle towards the end of the aisles. I think there's a few other needles there maybe. There may be the glass, the little plastic bead eyes or glass eyes or such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember I saw them. I saw them there. This little duck is turning out very cute. Started as a heart, turned out as a duck. A little love bird. Oh, it's a heart bird. It's good. <laughs> it's getting somewhere though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so it takes some time to figure this out. <laughs> it definitely does. It takes time to figure it out. It takes time to do it. Um, takes time if you stab yourself and it hurts when I definitely was working on it at first that happened a lot of times all right oh my goodness sure. powering through we have another petal added very sweet so as I've, I've been telling Kate a bunch but this white stabilizer here um it's meant to be water dissolvable I guess you could say so you can take a brush and add some warm water and just like paint it away maybe we could even do it I we could try it I don't have a brush here oh we don't do, I don't have warm water oh it should be warm I think water? it's warm I don't know just we'll po fix it in post <laughs> yeah that's what I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. yeah we can always see and do it and then after we post on our Facebook and say it doesn't work or it worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find an option. We can go to the very short video maybe. Yeah, it's like here we go. On on the unveiling. Does mm -hmm. it work? I feel like we should do a lot of that with crafts. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things, though, that you can buy, and, like, it's meant for one purpose, but artists are interesting folks. They can figure out a lot of purpose or, like, uses for something. Definitely a gift they have. All I want to say when I'm doing it, this is <laughs> Okay. <laughs> little bird for him. Little bird. Okay, let's get a beak going here. To have other tip. If I was to make a beak, it would be so small. What I could do is make a bigger piece and then I can um, cut it and then stab it in. That is the trick. I'm gonna take this. Crisscross, make pieces so when I stab them, they'll interlock. And then I could even roll it up a bit. Let's a little bit. Ooh. Cat's doing a handstand. Oh, cat's doing a handstand. She wants to just handstand. I have um, a helper. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> He's really encouraging. I'm not even sure if it's he or she. This cat's very encouraging. Yeah. Just this little little kitten. He's a nice, nice friendly cat. Okay, so from here, I'll start a little bit more. Yeah, 
That's so beautiful, Kate. Yeah, add a little, I would add a little bit more here, like the petals to add. It's really nice. Well done. You're welcome. <laughs> big cleanup of my studio at home still so I feel like that's where the rest of my needles are um, and I, I swear I had like one that holds three or three or four needles too I just don't know where I put them I hope it's not a shaky camera for you all very sorry if it is but my point trick If you're just tuning in here again, I'm using this coin. If you just looked away for a moment, oh, you're like, "Oh, you are still working with the coin." I, I am. Uh, I, I'm working with the coin again. I put, I put it down and then I'm back. Okay. Yeah. So I find if you don't have a proper needle, really utilizing the foam is your friend because you can poke some of those fibers in there and that's going to hold it and help. But this is so much safer than you putting my finger right there as I'm violently stabbing. Oh, see? Oh, so. I'm violently stabbing. And I don't need something that big because I'm just adding a teeny tiny beak, so. Even so, I can just turn it back a yeah, I, the sound is very nice. It doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's actually very relaxing. Mm -hmm. I like, it's almost like pointillism, but for fiber arts. Because <laughs> you're just making dots. I must say the one downfall of these needles is that you don't have the luxury of that bend right at the top. So I've been poking myself a little <laughs> bit with it, just like over time poking the same repetitive motion. But it does work. I'm very happy with that. Do you still have those scissors here? Yeah. So, boop, my little ball. And now, boop. So I don't need that still. Okay, so uh, the question is, if I take it off, do you think the big is <laughs> the big is the right size? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Good fit. Sorry. Yeah. If you take it off. So if I take it off and I want to keep working on that afterwards, I feel like it does it work. I don't know. Let's give it a try. I say we can just try taking it off. So now we can see because like a lot of your belt is like pushed in there. Uh -huh. So we want to be careful lifting it off. I guess I'll do it here too. There you go. So you can see the back. Uh -huh. How all the thread is. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay, so now uh, with paper, I can just put it back. You could just, actually? yeah, if you okay. want to put it back, yeah. So I can put it back. Yeah. And, and you can add more. Again, all the oh. <laughs> things again. Wait, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Here's another pin. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to see how it looks like and oh, yeah. repeat it. Yeah. On, um, in the book, it does say... It does say you can, uh, um, oh, did I lock it? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> um, in the book, it does say, avoid pulling it off to check the back. But I don't like following along, too. <laughs> I feel like you can learn from your mistakes. So if it says not to do it, and you do it, and it ruins your project, well, the book said not to do it so far. But if you do it, it doesn't really ruin your project to your standard. Eh, that's fine. As long as you're not doing it for other people. <laughs> but, 
This beak is so big, I'm trying to make it smaller. <laughs> oh, my duck. Yeah, that's a good idea. And that's, uh, right. in between. <coughs> yeah, a little cat has a bed. Yeah, I think this, uh, workshop definitely takes more focus than mm -hmm. painting for me. So I've been trying to like <laughs> talk and do all that stuff around it, but then like I have a teeny tiny area I'm working on. I'm like, I don't want to hurt myself. So I'm just going to be quiet as I work here. Mm -hmm. So this work definitely is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. As nope. I know some artists say it takes forever when it comes to something, you know, uh, really intricate or mm -hmm. yeah uh, it just gets really too much yeah sometimes it depends on depends on the, the person but some people really like something that takes so much time and focus and precision mm -hmm. or you know take it like embroidery where embroidery can you can do like these very intricate cross stitch and stuff or you can just draw with your string and draw with your fabric so it's definitely hidden, like, some people really like it, other people don't. Um, here is my very mildly impressive duck that I created with a regular sewing needle. I would just like to say I'm quite proud of this. <laughs> I'm sure. I'll tidy him up a little bit with the other needle following Kate, but... <laughs> I'm, look, I made that with a regular needle. Nice. <laughs> his, oh, don't worry about his beak. Sweet. The beak might fly off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work more on him later, but <laughs> perhaps I'll get um, a little extra purple to add on to his head. Yeah. <laughs> Your cat has so many accessories now. There's a little heart. Oh. <laughs> you didn't think you could bring your cat to work and not let it leave empty-handed. That's a heart. <laughs> it's a cute kitty. I'm so glad you brought it as an example, Kate. <laughs> yeah, my aunt needs this. Yeah. It's a Russian cat. Russian. What's his favorite treat then if it's a Russian cat? Fish! Fish! Oh, so is my dog. My dog's Russian. <laughs> is there an international? Yeah, international fish. <laughs> Cod. I don't know. <laughs> it kind of like cocked its head to the side. It's, oh, my duck. It's like, hi. <laughs> I'm a duck. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Really, really great. Oh yeah. Well, here's what we have from our felting extraordinaire today. Um, had some little mini technical difficulties because ran into some problems not having the needles, but look at the detail that Kate has done on this. So again, this is the flat felting. Um, once she's finished, she can either add it to like a little canvas or she could attach it to a patch and put it on clothing, quite cool. Um, and then I made this little duck, I'm still working on it, but because it's like a 3D piece, it does take a bit more time. And I was using a smaller needle, but prior to that, we have this little, <laughs> blue avocado as I called it, or a little flower flat, and of course the great example that Kate 
um, had brought that her aunt had made this amazing little felted creature. So this is really the extent of what you can do. But of course, there's so many other um, tips and tricks in great books that you can find. There's the fish that Kate hates. <laughs> But um, yeah, so this is exactly what you know she's doing. But this this uh, looks like they felted it right onto the sweater, which is quite interesting that they did it that way. But yeah, great work you can do. Step by step guides. You can probably check your library for a book like this, or find more guides online. Um, but that is the video. Perfect. Hi, now you see me. <laughs> I switched with Ollie. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so thankful that Kate asked me to help out with today's workshop because I haven't touched my felting supplies in a very long time, as you have seen with my slight unpreparedness. And but... I have no experience with felt. So and Kate has no experience ever with felt. So this is Kate's very first time felting. So I thought it was good. <laughs> Um, always a pleasure being here and hope to see you all next week if you are in Winnipeg or the downtown area come on by to Studio Central you can hang out with myself or Ollie and a lovely bunch of other folks friends and alumni of Artbeat Studio so have a happy day take care happy weekend too long weekend bye bye, bye, -bye.